Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we are talking with... Hi, I'm Richa. Richa, so where are you based and what do you do? Uh, I live in Mountain View, mm -hmm. and I'm an Android developer at Coursera. Okay, and uh, how do you get started in Android development? Um, so I didn't start Android development when I graduated out of school. Mm -hmm. I was a back-end developer uh, before I was an Android developer. And by back-end meaning writing a web server or like what, what do you mean by back-end? Different things. So uh -huh. I started with Hadoop MapReduce. Oh, okay. I uh, did a lot of that. Uh -huh. And then I started uh, at Amazon and mm -hmm. I was working on server side building a lot of uh, back-end services okay. uh, to serve API requests. Right. Uh -huh. After that, I I was working on Firephone um, oh, for one of the Android. services yeah. on Firephone, uh -huh. um, and then I started getting a lot uh, more and more interested mm -hmm. on the Android app. Right. It wasn't exactly an Android app; it was Firephone app, but it, right. most of the code was Android. Yeah. Well, when you work on the Firephone, do you work on the OS of it? I mean, oh, you, you can't talk about it. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of dicey. Oh yeah. uh, no, I can talk about okay. it now. Uh -huh. uh, I did not work on the OS directly. Uh -huh. I was working on a voice assistant app. Oh, okay. Which is kind of like what Siri does. Right. Nice. Um, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I can imagine that because you you have to integrate that with the OS, right? Because people will f use that instead of typing, pretty right, much. Right. Right. So integrate cool. with the microphone. So you pretty much learned on the job then. You didn't like go take a course on Android or anything I did, like that. Actually. Okay. So I was working a lot on the backend side of Android. Right. Uh, when I started working a lot with content providers and mm -hmm. services and intent services right. and things like that. Uh, did a lot of work with the contacts app and other app applications on the device because mm -hmm. a voice assistant has to integrate with a right, lot of yeah. apps. Yeah. Uh, but I got started getting more and more interested in how Android works mm -hmm. and I actually did a boot camp. Oh, okay. An Android boot camp. Nice. Mostly learning about the UI part as well. Right, because you've been focusing on fragments. the um, non-visible parts right. of Android and right. you want to learn also how to ha uh, handle the UI. Exactly. Yeah, cool. Which is very complex, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, well. and I had no UI experience before, so this is just from ground zero up. Exactly. <laughs> nice. So nowadays you have much more experience in building Android apps. Yeah. Um, is there a particular way you think about how do you build an app? How do you structure it? Because like you said, it's complex, right? So how do you approach a, a problem like that? Sure. So the best way to approach a problem is to break it down. Sure into smaller pieces mm -hmm. and then handle those pieces independently, right. individually, right. trying to solve smaller problems at a time to solve the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about architecture is one of the ways to do that. So uh, to set the context around architecture, mm -hmm. this is something that uh, both iOS and Android apps follow right. at Coursera uh -huh. and it is inspired from Viper. It's Viper. not exactly Viper. It's like Fighter Jet? I mean, what's Viper? No. <laughs> Viper stands for View, Interactor, Presenter, okay. Entities, and Router. Okay. Uh, the way we translate it to Android is views usually stand for activities, fragments, along with... Ah, so not Android else. views. <laughs> yeah. It's called View, but not View. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not Android view, right. linear layouts or relative layouts. Right. So we leave uh, a little bit ambiguous so that we can be more flexible about sure. it and evolve it. Mm -hmm. um, the interactors are usually just layer between the presenter and the network and data store layers mm -hmm. or the repository. Okay. Um, the presenter usually sits between the view and the interactor and it basically does all the event handling and presentation logic handling for the view. Okay. Through a view model. Okay. And what the way it works is the presenter is created by the view. The presenter creates the view model mm -hmm. and then passes that view model to the view. And okay. then now we come to the view, uh -huh. which just renders this view model. And when a user interacts with the view, mm -hmm. that view model gets updated and sent back to the presenter. Ah. And the presenter just manages it. I see. So I'm picturing the a view model kind of like a, a package of instructions that the presenter sent over to the view, the activity. Say, it's actually even render simpler. this. Yeah, okay. it's actually even simpler than that. It's just a value object. 
Oh, <laughs> so it's a dictionary of sort, like a, a key it's value like, pair. Yeah, so a simplest view model would, would have an image, mm -hmm. uh, URL, right. and a title, for okay. example, for a very simple oh, course cell. That's almost what the server sends down over the wire a lot of the times. Like, I want to display this profile, and this yeah. is the name of the user, and then yeah. this is the picture. Yeah. Um, so actually, let's go through that example, right? So how would I structure something like that in the Viper architecture? Um, very simple. It's just an app that issue a call to the network, mm -hmm. and it will come back with a name, a string for the name, mm -hmm. and a string for the URL. Sure. And then we just display it as an image view uh, with a text view. Sure. How will you architect that in that architecture? Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, normally the way when I'm given that feature, right. um, and I know already the classes that I'm going to create, mm -hmm. I first go for the interactor. Okay. Um, and the the interact, assuming that I already have the network call or the database call that I need to make, right. I have that those APIs ready. Mm -hmm. I just have the interactor call a data source API and ask it to give me the data. So I'm still trying to figure out how, because in my head there are five boxes. There's the mm -hmm. V box, I box, P box, E box, and R box. Sure. So when I'm issuing a network call, mm -hmm. which box do I put my code in? Entities. Entities, so it's in the E box. Okay. Right. So assuming that the E box is completely written either by you or your colleagues, right. you can then worry about the interactor, interactor. Yes. All right, I'm getting a hang of it so you you have the interactor go talk to the entity right and fetches this piece of data, data out yeah. so so now so basically I'm like hey fetch me this user and then it does its magic which right. is either talking to a database or talking to the network right. and then it come back with this object now right. what then I write a value class okay to uh, to just uh, validate that this is what I got from the network. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to pass to the layers above me uh -huh. uh, to handle this class. Okay. And I'm done with the interactor. Okay. So then I I take the entity uh, network mm -hmm. um, object or wherever it's coming from. Sure. Trans uh, convert it to another representation, which the layers above the interactor are going to consume. Okay. Next, I write my presenter, mm -hmm. which actually consumes this object that I just wrote. And usually, is it in my head? It's going to be just a simple pojo, like a pure Java object yeah. that has two fields in it. One is exactly. string title and string image URL. Right. Okay. So for your example, mm -hmm. it is going to have an image URL uh -huh. and a title, two right. strings. Okay. So simple. now I transform the JSON coming down the wire into this. Right. And the present and so give it to is, the presenter. Yeah. That's already been done by the repository again. So oh. So not even like the, the no. interactor actually does nothing. The interactor <laughs> may need to interact with system services. Okay. So that's the part that it, that is made simple there. Mm. So say, uh, along with some data from the network, you also right. need to interact with the location APIs Right. to pull um, location data. Mm -hmm. Where is the user right now, for example. Okay. Or some other system services. Mm -hmm. um, then this is where you would make those right. calls. So yeah, I could imagine maybe um, I will fetch from the server that this is the name and the email, for example, right. and, and the image URL. And if the context has the phone number, I will exactly. also annotate the phone number and then pass it over to the exactly. presenter. Exactly. So, right. so whoever, the, it's the job of the interactor to worry about mm -hmm. interacting with either the data or the system. But not the user. The view does that. No. The, the view, again, it's a presenter that's handling this, but we can go into that. All right. So now. The interactor is done. Hand it over to the presenter. Right. Okay. And what happens? So now, when the so then I start writing my view and the presenter together. Oh, okay. After I'm done with the interactor, mm -hmm. I get to the view mm -hmm. and the presenter. In the view, I define what the view is going to be look like mm -hmm. and what are the different actions that the view is going to invoke. Right. And I pass them down directly to the presenter. So right, I write a presenter interface mm -hmm. that's going to handle those actions. Okay. And once I'm done with the view what it's going to look like and what actions it's going to... Um, uh, You're almost up. writing a contract at that point. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So it, that's what makes it so simple. Mm. It's um, In my head, I'm just write, it's like writing English sentences, <laughs> writing like a spec. Right. Like this um, should do that and that should do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Even to the point of, so we do a lot of event tracking also. Right. So I just put them in another interface, track this event, track this event, track this event, mm -hmm. and I'm done with my view. Because mm -hmm. I just coded to this interface. 
right. and then I take my presenter and mm -hmm. I just implement all of these interfaces like implement this uh, action on button right. click and implement this action when the UV is tracking something. Yeah, I like that because the boxes are very well contained so I can right. test them very well. That's the other advantage. Right. Yeah. And that's the way you validate mm -hmm. how good your architecture is. You just right. write tests for them. Yeah. If it's easy to write tests, mm -hmm. that means you have done a good job. That right. has been my frustration dealing with both back-end and uh, front-end code. Right. That we often end up writing code that we just don't know how to test. I have a monkey click on things. <laughs> <laughs> but so then the, the, the network may be down, you know, right. so a monkey can right. click, click on it. How many you mock yeah. different things on right. that? Mocking is the biggest problem. Right. How do you mock? But when you have the entity completely contained in its own box, then you can swap it in exactly. with a mocked entity. Right. Right. And then you can just tell. Now I'm going to give you an object with no image URL. More ha ha ha. What are you going exactly. to do now? <laughs> and then, exactly. and then and all the modules down the line will need to handle it properly. Yeah. And that brings me to your other question about libraries. Right. Um, so Dagger is awesome for that, mm. where you can just mock out things and then have Dagger provide you the mock implementations by injecting them uh -huh. uh, for configuration objects like a network client or a database client. Mm -hmm. um, these layers between uh, two objects, uh, we also use it to mock out event trackers right. and other things. Yeah. Um, we have a tweaks module which just uh, which just is a drop down in the debug mode which we can use to enable and disable certain features. Oh, nice. So great. We use that. And I believe you actually gave a talk on this at uh, DragCon Montreal. Yeah. Um, is the video available? Can people go watch it and learn so, more? So um, I don't know if the DroidCon Montreal video is available yet, uh -huh. but I gave another talk uh, at Coursera itself oh. at an Android meetup, and Great. that talk is available on YouTube. Nice. And I can share the link. With yeah, you. so we'll add that to the show notes so that people who are interested in the Viper architecture can learn more. Sure. Great. Well, Richard, thank you very much for talking with us. And if people want to find out more what you do, where do they find you on the internet? Uh, I am very active on Twitter, so mm -hmm. a best way to reach me is to tweet to me at richa123. Richa123, that's how you <laughs> find me on Twitter. And if you want to follow me, my Twitter handle is chuki, C-H-I-U-K-I. And thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Chiki. Bye. Bye.